nervous system? Actually, I chose to do the nervous system. This includes the brain, brain stem, spinal cord, and the nerves. We chose it because we'd already learned a bit about the respiratory and circulatory system and wanted a bit of a challenge. So together we both researched the nervous system and put together this video. The brain. The brain contains over 12 billion neurons and over 50 billion supporting cells, known as glial cells. The brain itself usually weighs around 1.5 kilos, making up about 2% of a person's body weight, but yet it requires 20% of the body's blood supply to function. Within the brain there is a soft tissue that floats within the skull and around the body. This fluid is called cerebrospinal fluid. It helps to provide the brain with proteins and glucose to give both the brain and its cells energy so that they can properly function. Without them the brain activity would slowly deteriorate, causing dizziness, confusion and unconsciousness. This is why people pass out if they're choked long enough, because the brain stops receiving oxygen and glucose. And if the supply is cut off anywhere between 4-8 to eight minutes, brain damage and death can occur. Cerebrospinal fluid also contains lymphocytes to protect the brain from infections and keep both the brain and spinal cord strong. The fluid itself is created in the center of the brain, known as the lateral ventricle. It is then pumped through the body up to four to five times a day thanks to vertebrae movement, or back movement. This movement is controlled by the basal ganglia, also known as masses or nuclei, which is found deep within the brain. The ridges or folds on the brain surface are known as gyrus, but are separated into two categories depending on their depth. They're known as sulci if they're shallow and fissures if they're deep. The brain has three major membranes, or layers, covering it. The outer layer is the cerebral cortex, followed by the pia-mater, the arachnoid, and the subarachnoid spark, which stores cerebrospinal fluid and blood vessels. The brain can be divided into four major sections, the frontal, temporal, periential, and occipital lobe. The frontal lobe is responsible for things such as thoughts, creativity, problem-solving, and emotions, while the temporal lobe interprets sound and memory, also with the help of the hippocampus. The periential lobe processes feelings of pain, changes in temperature and touch, and the occipital lobe controls our sight. The brain is also divided vertically into two halves, the left half controlling the right side of the body and the right half controlling the left side of the body. These halves are also known as hemispheres. The brain takes care of several different areas of the body while supporting the brain. Connecting the brain to both the brainstem and spinal cord is the thalamus. Its main job is to send motor nerves, nerves sent from the spinal cord to a muscle, and sensory nerves to the cerebral cortex, as well as some areas of the cerebrum. The brainstem also regulates roles that are required for our survival. These include the heart rate, respiration, a process of where energy is released from food such as glucose, which cells feed off of, blood pressure, digestion, and a few reflexes such as swallowing and vomiting. Nerves or senses such as taste, touch and hearing all start in the brainstem. The brainstem also controls sleep, spinal reflexes and maintains muscle tone, posture and sustained breathing. The spinal cord. The spinal cord is made up of a chain of vertebrae. The delicate tissues are protected by backbone to form a bony tunnel. It is considered to be the main communication line for the nervous system. The spinal nerves are sent through gaps between the vertebrae. The spinal cord runs from the brain to just over halfway down the back. In an adult, the spinal cord reaches an average of 43 centimeters long and is as thick as a finger at its biggest point. Like other parts of the body, it cannot repair itself if it is cut or damaged. The spinal cord and brain share the branching of nerves throughout the body, as they are connected. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves which control the five senses, touch, taste, hear, see and smell, and all of the body's movement, while there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves which branch from the spinal cord. The spinal cord also works with the brain to coordinate voluntary movement. The spinal neurons process every piece of information that enters the spinal cord. It also transmits it to the brain. However, sometimes the instructions are sent straight to the muscles. The spinal cord consists of two main parts, the inner H-shaped grey matter and the spinal nerves. The inner H-shaped grey matter gets its name from the way it looks when cut open, and if you hadn't already guessed, it looks like the letter H. The inner H-shaped grey matter contains the central part of the neurons, as well as the outer white matter which contains the axons of neurons, the thread-like parts of neurons. In the neck and lower back, the spinal nerves meet to form junctions. It's called a plexus, a network or nerve of vessels of the body, which is where all the major nerves originate. The spinal cord also assists us in quick thinking reactions, such as reacting rapidly to danger to avoid harm. The thin nerve fibers of a single neuron can come together in groups to form cable-like nerves. The body-wide network then reports to the central nervous system on what's happened on the inside and outside of the body. Most peripheral nerves divide and branch off in order of the nerve fibers to make contact with and reach as much of the body parts as possible. When neurons or nerves form groups, they are called plexus. These groups are formed so that the important areas such as hands and fingers can be kept under control. What is the difference between the central and peripheral nervous system? The central nervous system, also referred to as the CNS, controls the brain and spinal cord. 
while the peripheral nervous system, also known as the PNS, controls the sensory and motor neurons, as well as sending signals to and from the brain. The peripheral nerves. The peripheral nerves help transport information to and from the brain, as well as the spinal cord. The sensory fibers, fibers that carry signal towards the central nervous system, receive information from the outside world, skin, and internal organs. The peripheral nervous system also contributes to the control of motor fibers, which organize the contractions of the skeletal muscles, muscles connecting to either the start or end of a bone. The peripheral nervous system also regulates the internal organs and glands, making sure they function properly and smoothly. What is the difference between the path taken by a nerves when an object is touched versus the path taken by a nerves when a hot object is touched? A reflex action, better known as a reflex, is an involuntary and almost instant movement in response to a stimulus, a thing that triggers a movement. When a person touches a hot object, they immediately jerk their hand away without having to think, as reflexes don't require any thought. When a person touches an object, the mechanoreceptors, sensors that interpret sound and touch, in the skin are activated. They then signal the nearest neuron, letting it know that they have touched something. This neuron then sends this information to the next neuron, which gets passed on to the next neuron and so on, until the information reaches the brain. Once reached, the brain processes what you've touched and sends this information back down to the area in which you touched, using the same pathway that the information came from. By doing this, the brain can alert the area if it wants more information about the object it is touching or if you should stop touching it. However, when a person touches a hot object, the brain is less involved in the process. Instead of being passed on from neuron to neuron, the information is sent in junction straight up to the brain, so that the information can be processed quicker. By using motor neurons, the brain can alert the hand or other part of the body quicker and immediately withdraw itself from the object, rather than taking the time to send information back and forth to the brain to determine whether or not the area of the body should stop touching the object. The path taken by nerve impulses in a reflex is known as a reflex arc. A typical nerve cell. Nerve cells are divided into different categories depending on what type of information they transmit. There are three main types of nerve cells. A sensory nerve cell, a motor nerve cell, and an association nerve cell. The sensory nerve cells receive information from both the inside and outside of the body. Motor nerve cells pass instructions from the CNS to other parts of the body, such as our muscles, and association nerve cells connect to our sensory and motor neurons. A typical nerve cell contains the following components. Dendrites. Dendrites are branching fibers lined with synaptic receptors, cell receptors, which are responsible for receiving information from other neurons. Dendrites also collect and store all information that comes from axon terminals, terminals that release impulses. Axon. Axons carry impulses away from cells. Soma. Somas contain the nucleus, micadora, ribosome, as well as some other components from other cells. It is also responsible for the metabolic work of the neuron, work related to our metabolism. Presynaptic terminals. Presynaptic terminals are the end point of an axon, which are responsible for releasing chemicals to communicate with other neurons.